high bore. Mm. The HB Turbo launch irons Launcher. from Cleveland. Now I've done these in the past, and to be honest with you, I'm a massive fan of them. We're How outdoors on the course down here. Hello. And myself, Mark Crossfield, on the camera. We're going to play a few holes with them, and then we're going to take them inside and show you the actual numbers. Thanks for joining me for this video. I hope it helps. Let me know in this card up here. Would you game this club before the video starts? So looking at it, the big chunky thing. Would you game this? Yes or no? In this card up here, I'd love to hear. If you're new here, you like the reviews and you find they help you, maybe considering that subscribe button. Also, if you're already subscribed, hello again. Maybe ring that bell so you don't miss another great review. Let's check these irons out. What did you think of that? You've never hit it's these, have you? It's a different sound, isn't it? I've never ever hit these. We've so never hit anything like this, to be that's honest. That's the six iron that we're starting off with. Obviously, yeah. down by the ball. If you put it down by where your ball would be, yeah. I mean, talk to me. I mean, if you if you just, well, I'm going to have to separate this club here. I'm going to have to cut it in half here and just focus more on the face because that for me is like, wow, what am I looking at there? That's hard for me to get my head around. But once I just look at the face front point of view. Like the silver bit, not the black yeah, bit. Yeah, once I see that part down, which is my main focal point when I'm looking down at the ball, really, it, it, it looks absolutely fine, doesn't it? It doesn't look anything, it's not particularly, all right, there's a slightly thicker top line, which is a little bit intrusive, but not too bad. And then minimal offset, to be fair. It's challenging your ideas of what an iron stroke golf club should be, isn't it? So I, I have watched Cleveland over the years. I've never actually gained anything from Cleveland. Um, I've never actually tried anything massively from Cleveland, but they are not afraid to have some funky looking clubs, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right the way back to Corey Pavin's day. Yeah, yeah, those, the like, Vast. anti Vast. That's yeah, the one, I had like, a anti Shank ones yeah. or something. Like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that is, that is right in their wheelhouse of, of different and space age looking, really. So I agree with you, down by the ball, like you've got to be able to separate the two bits of the club, the silver bit to the black bit, haven't you? Yeah, you've got you've to. You've got to be able to think, I want to look at this as my iron and this kind of disappears, yeah. or it's there to help me and I'll like not look at it. Again, for me, I mean, I'm a hybrid player. These make a lot of sense. I'm really looking forward to seeing the numbers as well. Because I just, again, I think lots of people feel like you, Yeah. like it blows them away. Arguably, there's a lot of people who could get a lot from this club, is there not? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to whack the six iron down there. I mean, it just feels and what sounds... What does that sound like? Like, I think I lost that in the air a bit because I don't know, but that felt like it went higher than where I'm normally used to looking, which again, right. we'll check with the real numbers. Um, it's such a cross between an iron and a hybrid, isn't it? Well, it, I, I actually think it sounded more solid than the hybrids that I've tested, like in what I've used in the past. What was interesting with that one, I was expecting a tingier sound and yes. I didn't get it. No. But there's a lot of sound going on, so let's see how it feels as we carry on. Um, yeah. I'm, ex I'm always excited by these. How many students would not game it because it doesn't look right, even if the numbers were as good as anything, do you reckon? I think for the category of player that this is possibly aiming towards, I don't think they're going to concern themselves by the look of it to a degree. Like I'm not saying all of them, but I would say that there's a high, a low proportion are not going to game it because of the looks. Um, I think as soon as those players that, that this category sort of moves towards, I think those players are going to see the results of what it gives them, i.e. the height, um, the distance probably, and we'll see from the numbers inside, but I just feel that they're going to, that's going to overshadow what the looks are going to be. See, I don't agree with that. My experience with students more, well, I, that's not true. I don't agree with it for the um, experience I've had with students. So obviously we're seeing different people. So yeah, yeah. Um, your experience is your experience. I had a lot of people when I was teaching full-time and custom fit them a lot who wouldn't use clubs where the brand didn't match what they thought it was. You know, they wanted tailor-made, didn't want ping, regardless if the ping was better or not. Um, and a lot of students where you would just say, like, the trouble with this, and we'll see when we get to numbers because I'm interested to see, it's so massive in its change of looks yeah. that you do expect massive breakthrough changes in ball flight and we'll see from the numbers because we've not tested them for the numbers yet so i'm interested to see you'll be surprised how small that is 
Okay. Possibly. We'll find out. So then, because the numbers are only small gains, to have such a dramatic look, people then can't see that as a benefit enough to yeah. think, well, I'll actually have the ones where my friends don't maybe laugh at me or joke or take the mick and that kind of thing. Yeah. Because the numbers aren't, you know, it's not as if it's going 20 yards further and 20 foot higher or any, yeah. you know, it, they'll be small okay. changes. Uh, well, then I absolutely agree with what you're saying there. I think if, if the numbers are very similar to a more, uh, let's say, traditional looking iron, yeah. then... I think they're gonna. It's gonna draw more players to that traditional look over this because the gains aren't that big. Or, or they are, but you've just got to spread them over a big little period of time. Yeah. So again, looking down at the eight, so you now see a lot less of the back of the club, and it does turn into more of just like a chunky iron look, I mean, like a game improvement. So I know that sole is there, and to be honest with you, for lots of people whose turf interaction isn't great, that sole could work a benefit, could it not? Like I feel with my hybrid, well, I use it for chipping because of that sole. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, People yeah, who are yeah, yeah. struggling with the way the club interacts with the ground, there's a big part of me that thinks that's only going to be a quite a good thing. I mean, my first impression is just hitting that one club from back there. Yeah. I didn't feel anything different personally straight off the bat. Well, I don't think you would because your interaction with the ground is pretty good. Okay, so you're talking about players that maybe come in a little bit chunkier. And it's very board. soft. Yeah. So I think people who are playing maybe on firmer conditions and want to duff a little bit, this yeah. might bounce a fraction more, you would hope. Yeah. You know, like off a mat and then get more of the ball. Yeah. Right, before I hit this 8 iron, let's go and have a look at the actual tech. The, the tech. Let's see what Cleveland are saying about the turbo launcher. So high ball turbo have got a completely hollow construction, so similar to a hybrid. The redesigned high ball crown, so this back bit, pushes the centre of gravity very low and very deep. So lower back, centre of gravity and deep is going to all be there to try and help you push that ball up in the air, get it launching. We've also got a new hotter, faster face, Cleveland are saying on these. So they're claiming a bit more distance than prior generations. And we've also got a progressive shaping, so from long irons down to shorter, so you will see the thickness calm down, the appearance calm down, and also just to try and optimize the ball flight with each of the long irons through into the medium into the short irons. It's in, I can't wait to see the numbers. That looks higher. I'm gonna guess they don't particularly go much higher, but they get up quicker. Exactly like my video that we did with the hybrid to a yeah. long iron advantage. Yeah. I think where players are gonna win is off the face launch, and this is a complete guess, compared to top out and land angles. Okay. So that eight iron felt good. It certainly doesn't feel as hybrid tingy as I remember these clubs feeling. In the past, so previous models? Yeah, I've tried the other ones and I loved them. Like, I could game these. I could absolutely, you know what I'm like, I don't <laughs> literally care what it looks like. I just need it to perform the task, which is to try and shoot the lowest score. That's all my brain is thinking. Yeah. Um, and I could absolutely game these. The eight iron's calmer, isn't it? Yeah, it's calmer. It's um, it's definitely like it's squarer, isn't it? That face is quite a square-looking face. Probably coming up from the bottom here. It's a nice rounded leading edge, which I kind of like that. But then this bit here is quite high, so it gets a little bit almost like a square look. Which again, I have se I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that with with Cleveland irons in the past. It's definitely a calmer sound, isn't it? definitely a solid sound. Um, I caught that one just a, probably a fraction out of the toe there. I agree with you, I mean off this slight down slope here I'm seeing maybe just a fraction more pop off the face, like yeah. definitely at launch I'm, I'm expecting to see in the studio maybe a higher launch. Has it, has it topped out as high as what you, you know, what you were saying there earlier on? It's hard Probably, to tell, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure we can see it off it, but certainly off this downhill line, I didn't have any issue getting that ball in the air. Does that feel doable? Yeah, that's very easy. Certainly no dig with that, mm -hmm. is there? No, and to be honest with you, I, I, I get absolute confidence, just like you were saying about hybrids that you chip with occasionally, and yeah. we, we do as well. But, um, I've got absolute confidence in the fact that this sole is not going to want to, or the leading edge is not going to dig in because the sole is there to help me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a part of me that wonders if golf clubs didn't have a tradition. Yeah. And we started again, would we get closer to this? I, 
I think knowing what if you go if you before making any golf club yeah okay you have all your data of the way everyone hits the ball so you have your averages and I reckon if you wanted to throw the biggest net to catch the most golfers yeah. in iron play surely you'd be close to this wouldn't you would you I, not? I, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think, and I think it's a really interesting point that then it's so this is so cult and small. It sums up what golf is stuck in and about a little bit for me. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, right the way through the game. Tradition is a weapon in this game rather yeah. than often something that we should celebrate. It's used a little bit against people. I often think in golf, which is a shame because yeah, I know when I was teaching. I wanted to get people in clubs like this more and it was quite hard. hard. I found a problem, Dan. Oh, oh, oh God. Nearly had me there. Oh, and again. Oh, oh, oh. it's harder because of that. But you get it, you can get, yeah. Because you've got more. You gotta get, I think you gotta get right on the toe on it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I almost, because Matt does it backwards, doesn't he? That's you, Neil, and me almost, he goes backwards with his wedge. Oh, does he? But, yeah, when he picks up his wedge, he goes like the back bit and flips that. Oh. Um, <laughs> Don't work yeah, hard, I work need smart. To get that grinded just in that corner. Just to just get something a bit of, for yeah, Cleveland. Pick it up. Footnote, you know. So here's mine, almost pin high. Danny as well is kind of pin high over there. Uh, we're going to go inside and look at the real numbers. Outside, I absolutely, they make sense in my mind, but I am very much a hybrid player. They also make sense to me why so many people probably wouldn't want to gain yeah. them for yeah. looks. But let's see if the performance, um, you know, changes people's mind when we take them inside. Right, so we've got some interesting numbers. Let's start with just the straight hitting because I've done something else in the speed I hit at as well to try and relate it to maybe the demographic of people who would be really looking at this club. So at my speeds, the six iron in the Cleveland is carrying 178. It peaks height at 30 yards and is launching at 16.7. So what I then did is compared it to my T300. So I compared it to a very different looking iron, still game improvement, just to get a comparison for me to how different you know the launches and that were. And to be honest with you, they launched, well my T300 launched at 16.7. Now we're one degree difference in these two clubs. They're almost identical in lofts. Uh, carried at 175 and peaked height at 29. So very similar performance when I was hitting with my ball speeds of around 120 mile an hour. The six iron had a potential in the Cleveland to be slightly stronger than my, which is my five iron basically in my T300s. It's, it's got six on the bottom, but I play it as my five iron because of the lofts. Um, probably a potential to spin a fraction less and go a little bit further, even though on averages the spin was actually two, uh, 100 uh, revs almost less with the T300. So then what I did is I thought I'm going to reduce my ball speed. So my ball speeds are around 120 miles an hour. I'm going to reduce it to 100 miles an hour. So now I'm carrying the six iron in the Cleveland of my six iron, which I play as a five iron, around 135 to 140. You know, your, your average goal for kind of distances. So the T300 with an average ball speed of 99.4, so got very close to the 100 miles an hour, launched at 16.8. The high bore, uh, ball speed of 100 miles an hour, 0.2, so almost within, well, within one mile an hour of each other's ball speeds, close as I can get. That's now launching at 18.3. There's now we see a bit of a gap. Um, peaking height, the high ball's at 21, where the T300 now peaked height at 18, and then resulting distance in the same was two yards difference. The high ball was 140 to 138 with a tight list. So really, I would see it all very much the same, apart from the high ball does have that potential to pop it up a little quicker, then in turn peak height a fraction more. And I saw that difference a little bit more when I removed speed from the shot. So put it into the demographic I think they're trying to hit. So all intents and purposes, the high ball, if you're looking for a club that helps you pop the ball up in the air and get more height, it's kind of, it's, it's doing that. The numbers are decent, aren't they? I mean, it does pop it up a little higher at the yep. start and then in turn there's a bit more resulting height. What do you think, yeah. Dan? No, I, I think what we're seeing in here 
compared to what we're seeing out there. So I'm obviously I'm used to using a very different club to what that T300 is that you've got in the bag there. But I could see a difference certainly when it popped off the face. And we talked about that out on the golf course there where compared to my, let's say my CB six iron, yeah. I would see that six iron, my CB being a lot flatter in its flight, certainly on the initial get go. Whereas this one definitely is performing pretty much what I expect it to do. Yeah, and it's not as big as, it, like I said outside, they're very small differences, which is yeah. why I think people don't then buy into it as much as they could, Yeah. because they're expecting it to go like five yards higher, yeah. and four degrees higher, yeah. and 10 yards further. Yeah. Basically, loft is gonna dictate 99, or so let's say loft is gonna dictate around 97 to 95% of what happens, yeah. And then all your MOIs and your low center of gravities is going to just push those percentages that fraction more, which yeah. is exactly what we see there. I You're agree. still dialing into small amounts. If you had someone with slow ball speed, wanted more distance, wanted more height, yeah, straight away, I would be saying, let's try yeah, these let's to try start this. off Definitely. and work back. Yeah. Because I don't think you're getting anything that yeah. beats that. One. And I think I think what you've done there with the experiment with the T300 or the equivalent of what, because those players that are using T300 or looking at a T300 sort of club. That's the sort of guy that these these guys are kind of looking for. Those yeah. guys that want a little bit of help, pop the ball up a little bit more. But also, let's not forget this sole. Yeah. This sole, I think, is is the is the key to the ingredient of this club when it, when it comes to that little turf interaction, should we say. Certainly when I was chipping with it, mm. you just felt so much more confident, just like I would with a hybrid, just to sort of almost use a putting technique to, to chip with it. So I, I love it from that point of view. I've said it for years, I could easily game this. Like, I would yeah. quite like to be a tour pro of games this, just for the fun of just it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, be a sponsor's dream as well, wouldn't it? You yeah. know what I mean? They would love it. Um, yeah. And I agree with you, the soul for me as a hybrid player, this really dials into my understanding, even if it's not true or not, to like my visualisation in my mind of what is going on when my club hits the ground. Yeah. So I think I would agree with you there. That is as big a selling point as all this. Yes. Because you are really getting fraction gains yeah. on height and launch subject to what you deliver. Where that, to me, really plays in my mind as a benefit. Yeah, you said it earlier. It's like having a load of little chippers in your bag. It is, it? it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Post comments down below, let me know. Is it the ugliest thing you've ever seen? Is it something you could game or not? Let me know. If you like the videos, hit the subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, don't be afraid to ring that bell. Um, and let me know in the comments down below, would you or wouldn't you?